want me to start? I'll let you know, don't worry. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session titled Tax Filing with Ade. If you're joining us for the first time, this Launch and Learn series is provided by Prude Inc. And Prude stands for Pride, Race, Unity, Dignity Through Education. It's a nonprofit that has been in existence for over 41 years. And in those 41 years, we've been providing programs that promote diversity, inclusion, and equity for newcomers, visible minorities, and citizens in the community. My name is Christine Eroko, and I manage newcomer programs, including Women Leadership Workshop at Prude Inc. And today, it gives me absolute pleasure to welcome Adenike on our program today. And then she'll be sharing insights on what you need to know when it comes to filing taxes here in Canada. Nike, thank you so very much for joining us. We really appreciate you. And um, we look forward to hearing all that you have to share with us. So thank you and welcome. Thank you for having me, Christine. Thank you for having me, Prude Hing. Um, so just like she said, this um, afternoon, we'll just be talking a little bit about, just like an overview about tax filing in Canada, especially for newcomers and um, international students. And I'm sure we, we're all kind of familiar with what tax filing is, but I'm sure that during this session, we'll learn one or two things. So I'll just start by introducing myself and um, let you know that my life is not just about work, work, work. <laughs> just like you said, my name is Adini Kalala. I'm married and I'm a professional accountant. And outside work life, I love to spend quality time with my family. I love reading, cooking, and I love to do a lot of handcrafts. So let's go into the topic for today. And I have a quick outline of what we're going to be touching based on today. Introduction to the Canadian tax system, why you should file your taxes, basis of filing income taxes, requirements, documents needed to file your taxes, we'll talk a little bit about the tax returns and some quick definitions, some quick and important facts and questions and answers at the end of the day. So, um, Canadian tax system is a self assessment system. And what do I mean by this? I mean by individuals are obligated. It's not something that you, you want to do voluntarily. It's mandatory to complete your income tax annually. And it must be sent to CRA by April 30th of every year. For example, for year 2022, you have to file your taxes before April 30th in year 2023. And um, the Canadian tax system is based on six general principles. And those principles are equity, neutrality, simplicity, certainty, economic growth, and interna international competitiveness. And the reason why the Canadian tax system is based on this six general principles is to make our tax system um, a very competitive one, one that is fair enough so that people would not avoid or evade taxes. But for the purpose of this presentation, all the six principles are very important, but I would be talking more about equity because of its importance and the implications if, um, if equity is not perceived in the Canadian tax system. So um, equity, just like I, I mentioned a little earlier, it means equal treatment of people in similar situations. And um, I'll give an example of that. For example, if there is a married um, couple and they have children, um, being equal, being equity in the tax system would mean that if they have children and there's another family that doesn't have children, they really can be treated the same way. They shouldn't really be required to pay the same amount of taxes. And you would understand as I go on in this topic. So when a tax system is perceived not to be fair by people, people tend not to comply with it and it can give room for tax avoidance or tax evasion. So um, tax avoidance, I would explain what it means because sometimes we kind of confuse the meaning of tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax avoidance is something that is legal and it's um, allowable. It's the way you manage your tax affair. 
within the law, like you try to minimize your tax liability and um, in a way that is, um, in a way that is allowable within the law. And um, for tax avoidance, I would give an example. For example, in Canada, we have something called the RRSP, which is the Registered um, Retirement Savings Plan. And it's a plan that you can use to avoid taxes now, avoid um, tax, I, I, I taxes now so that in future you can you know pay lower taxes on your income. So if you're using a higher RSP to avoid tax, it is perfectly you know legal and it is allowable within the law. But now tax evasion is the one that is illegal and you could face criminal consequences if you ever caught evading tax. And you know, tax evasion, just like the definition says, is a form of intentionally failing to report your income or falsely claiming expenses that you actually did not have. So an example of tax evasion could also be someone that works in a restaurant that receives tips. For tips, for example, is not one of is not an income that would be reported on your paycheck. It is usually paid out to the employees at the end of the day. So if you fail to report these tips on your tax return, you are committing what is called tax evasion and you could um, face the court, the criminal court, you could face criminal consequences for evading such tax as little as it is. And exa another example is falsely claiming an expense that you actually did not incur. So if, if you find yourself doing that, you are gradually working in the line of evading taxes. So I would move to the next slide and share a little bit about why you should pay your taxes. You know, one of the things that when, 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 we, when we receive our paychecks and for, for, for especially for those that are employed, I'm not talking about self-employed people now, for those that are employed, we see the chunk of taxes that is being deducted from our income and we are wondering, what is this? This is a lot of money. But the good news is that the taxes that individuals pay and that corporations pay helps the government to source all its public expenditures. It helps the government to, to finance and to help pay for, for um, hospital bills, to pay for the free schooling system that we have in Canada. It helps to take care of public safety. It helps to take care of our roads and the free assets we have in the library. So it's a good thing that we see what our taxes is being spent on. So um, the taxes also, the taxes that we pay, and we pay different types of taxes in, in Canada. We pay income taxes, that's just the one that comes up from our paychecks. We pay sales tax, the one we pay when we go to do our groceries or we go shopping. And then we also pay property taxes. And also there's also something on our paychecks that's called the EI and the, the CPP. And EI is called Employment Insurance. And um, the CPP is a contribution that we make towards um, our future when we can't not really work again. So as we make these contributions in future, we are guaranteed that we will receive something from the government, however little. And then the EI is the one that helps us to um, take care of um, unemployment situations when we lose our jobs, we can go to Service Canada and um, you know request for um, EI payments. So all those taxes we pay, they all have different things that they help the government to fund. So I'll, um, I'll, just, I'll move to the next slide. And um, this talks about, um, this talks about still reasons on why you should file your taxes. You know, sometimes um, some people say, I didn't have any income, so I really don't need to file a tax but you're not doing yourself any good by not filing your taxes because if you don't, you might miss on certain benefits. Even if you do not earn an income, there's a possibility that you could um, receive GST credits. And um, if you have children, you could also receive the Canada Child Benefit. Also filing your taxes also gives you room to 
claim on um, tuition credits. For example, if you're an international student, you pay um, tuition fees to a Canadian university or a Canadian college. When you file your taxes, you will be receiving a tax, um, a tuition credit from the government. And what this tuition credit does is it reduces your future um, tax payable. So even if you don't have an income in a particular year, this tuition credit is usually carried forward to future years and you can carry it forward to up to 10 years. And which, which is good when you start earning a lot of money, it reduces the, in, the um, income tax payable that you hold to the government in any particular year you use this tuition credit. And then um, I'll move on to the basis of filing income taxes in Canada. And I broke this heading down into four different parts because of their importance. So first I'll start with the important dates for filing your personal taxes. So you should understand that even though you're required to file your taxes in Canada, there is um, a time limit to when you can file your taxes. So from mid-February, the floor is usually opened for you to file your taxes from mid-February to April 30th. And the exception to that is if you or your spouse is a self employer is self-employed, you the deadline to file your taxes will be June 15th. So if um, you or your spouse is self-employed and you are an employee, the fact that your spouse is self-employed gives you, you know, the opportunity to file your taxes up, um, up till June 15th, so you'll have enough time. And um, another thing is if April 30th falls on a weekend, that means your tax is due on the next working day. For example, if your tax um, this year, for example, um, April 30th falls on a Sunday. So that means the deadline for filing taxes in April 2023 is May 1st. But if that April 30th doesn't fall on a weekend, it falls on a Friday, for example, you the deadline for filing your taxes is April 30th. If you file after April 30th, then you will get a penalty from CRE. Now, the way this uh, penalty works is that if you have a refund from CRE, there is nothing to charge you interest on. But if you have a balance owing to CRE, then you start getting charged um, on, you start getting charged for filing your taxes late. So um, it's always good, you have enough room between February, mid-February, let's say February 15. For example, tax season for this year, 2023, was opened February 20th. So you have enough time between February 20th to April 30th to gather all your documents, to gather all your slips in order to avoid um, penalties and interest for late filing. Another thing about, important thing about taxes that you should know, whether you, whether you are self-employed or employed, even though self-employed people are allowed to file their taxes up to June 15th, if you hold CRE, you have to pay that amount by April 30th, which is kind of tricky. So even if you're self-employed, you still have to make sure that you file your tax within that um, mid-February to April 30th, so that if you have an amount going to CRE, you can pay it by April 30th. Please bear that in mind. And the way CRE calculates the penalties and interest that they charge on taxes is once you don't pay by April 30th, the, the interest starts compounding and it compounds on the balance and also on the interest on the interest charge on a daily basis. So you don't want to find yourself in that mess. So try and file your taxes, whether you're employed or self-employed, try and file your taxes before April 30th to know whether you are in a refund position or an owing position. So that takes me to the next um, part under the basis for filing your income taxes. You want to know what documents to gather, what are the requirements you need. And um, first and foremost, your personal information is very important. Your full name should be spelled correctly. If you make a mistake on your name, you could have um, delay in processing your taxes. So you want to be sure that your full name is spelled correctly, your mailing address, even if you change address during the year, the address where you currently live in as at the time you're filing your taxes 
is the address that should be on your tax return. Your date of birth is very important. Your married house status is very, very important because this affects the way CRA determines what benefits you are credits you are entitled to. And then the name of your spouse, if applicable, your SIN number, you would need all those things to file your taxes. And then you would need different income slips. Different income slips applies to different people depending on your tax situation in a particular year. So for most employed employees, you would, you would always receive a T4 from your employer. For most self-employed people that maybe earn professional income or commission, you would receive a T4A. And for people that um, assess service New Brunswick for um, EI payments during the year, maybe due to loss of their job, or due to um, paternal or maternity leave, you would get a T4E sleep. And then for those that have investments with the banking institution, with financial institutions, you would get a T3 or a T5. So depending on your situation, and also if you um, own a corporation and then um, you um, have um, some balance in your shareholder loan, you would, you would almost really, really want to pay yourself a dividend or you pay yourself a wage. So if you're paying yourself a dividend, you would also get the T5 slip. And then there are also some, um, there's also some income that you wouldn't get slips for. Like I mentioned earlier, when I was explaining about tax evasion, if you receive tips as a restaurant worker, you definitely will not get any slip for this. So it is your responsibility has a genuine citizen and resident of Canada to declare such income on your um, income tax return. So um, you also you would also need documents. And what I mean by documents for claimable deductions is um, documents that would reduce your total income for the year. So you would need documents like official tax donations. For example, if you've made a donation to a registered charity, I'm repeating that again, a registered charity. Some people make donations to um, crime fighters, for example, or the policemen. Um, it's, if you make a donation to the, to the police during the year, it's, a police is not a registered charity, and so you would not get an official tax donation receipt, and that is not claimable on your tax return. So it has to be a registered charity whenever you're giving donation to any organization, and you know that you want an official don tax donation receipt, ensure that it is um, a registered charity. And then um, you also need, um, documents, maybe if you pay child expenses during the year, you need such documents as well to reduce your total income, which would ultimately affect the tax payable. Then if you had medical expenses, now the medical expenses must be within a certain threshold. It must be at least 3% of your total income. If it is less than 3%, then you can really claim that on your tax return. So if you have a lot of medical expenses and medical expenses could be from the dentist, from the um, optician, it could be prescriptions. It would not be anything you go to buy over the counter. So it has to be a prescription from the doctor. And then you could also claim medical expenses if you travel to for, for your for um to see the doctor if, if the travel is more than 40 kilometers from where you live you're also eligible to claim that on your tax return and then if you walked from home during the year this you, you can claim certain bills for your home office expenses so um you would need all those documents because you can't just you know say oh i had these expenses during the year we need proof you need proof to show to CRA because CRA expects you to keep that document for six years in case they, they come for you for a review. So you need documents to prove that you actually, you know, made all this, um, incurred all these expenses and to be allowable to be claimable on your tax return. And then you also need um, documents like invoices, financial statements, if you are self-employed. So you need all those documents to file your taxes. I'll move on to the next slides. And now I'm going to talk about different ways to file your taxes. Um, 
if you are um if you are low income earner you didn't earn so much income during the year you are eligible to file your taxes um, at a free tax clinic where volunteers are available to file your tax and to be eligible you must have a modest income and a very simple tax situation. And then um, the modest income is usually determined by the tax organization that's organizing the tax, the free tax clinic. And then you must have a simple tax um, situation. What I mean by a simple tax situation is you must not be self-employed. If you have self-employment income, your situation is not a modest situation and you can't, you're not eligible to go to a free tax clinic. And then you, if you have interest from a financial institution over 1,000, um, I apologize, it's supposed to be under 1,000. So if you have an um, interest over 1,000, your, your situation will not be regarded as modest and so you're not eligible to go to a free tax clinic. So um, you could go to a free tax clinic to file your taxes or you, could um, authorize a representative, if you're not comfortable with doing your taxes yourself, you could authorize a representative, a friend, a family member, or an accountant to do it on your behalf. But in order for you to um, seek the help of a representative, you have to authorize them to do so. That means there's certain documents that they must sign for CRA to see that yes, this individual has authorized you to help them with their tax filing. Now, the, you can um, file your tax manually or you could e-file, you could file it electronically. But if you file your tax manually, note that it could take CRA 10 to 12 weeks to process your tax filing. I'm sure you don't want to wait for months in order to get your taxes um, filed. But if you file electronically, which CRA is really promoting, it takes them two weeks you know, to process your tax return and if you're eligible for a refund you also get that within two weeks which is a good which is a good thing now um, i'm just going to touch base on tax returns and um i just wanted to um also share an insight about the way the tax the tax rates work in canada so there are different tax brackets tax rates on which you're charged so you wouldn't you you're not charged on a single tax rate across your income so for example if you make um if you make less than 50000 the tax rate you're paying is 15% but once you make more than 50000 so the first um 50,000 is charged at 15%. And then if, for example, you make 60,000, the difference between the 60,000 and the 50,000, that's the 10,000 is charged at a higher tax bracket. So the more you earn, the more income tax you pay. So that's why I said Canada has a progressive income tax system, and which means you pay more taxes as your income increases, but on, a different, on different tax rates. So the first step in your tax return is to enter your correct personal information, just like we have discussed, make sure that there's no mistake. And if you're married, disclose. If you're single, dis disclose, because this affects the way Canada Revenue Agency um, calculates your benefits and credits that you might be entitled to. And then the next step is to enter correctly all your income that you earned in the year, and then you can now proceed to claim eligible deductions if you have those documents to claim them. And I talked um, a little bit about those deductions that you can claim like medical expenses and donations and all that. So um, the way the tax system works in Canada, there are tax credits that the government, um, the government would give you, but some are refundable and some are non-refundable. So what the non-refundable tax credit, and an, an example of a non-refundable tax credit is the tuition credit that I mentioned earlier. So the tuition credit will reduce the tax that you are meant to pay, but if it reduces it um, to a certain level and you have more, you wouldn't get a refund for it. For example, if you are, meant to pay a tax of 5,000 
dollars, and then you have an you have a, a non-refundable credit, maybe a tuition credit of six thousand. That means you have more credit than taxes that you have to pay. You have a thousand dollars left. That one thousand dollars is not refundable because it's a non-refundable credit. It only reduces the tax you owe, but it doesn't give you anything back as a refund. So tax um, tuition credit would be one example of a non-refundable credit. And now a refundable credit, an example of a refundable credit would be something like a donation. So if you make a donation to a registered charity, you get something back, you get, I think it's about 25%, depending on the amount you donate, you get it back. And so that will not only reduce the tax that you owe, but it would also give you a refund position. And also certain, certain situations also um, gives you um, a tax a refund. For example, if you're, employ if, you're an, if you're an employee and your employer deducts more um, income tax than they should have deducted from you on your paycheck, you would ultimately get a tax refund when you're filing your taxes. In the same way, if they've deducted more CPP than they should have deducted from you, you would get a refund back at the end of um, the tax year when you're filing your taxes. So um, overpayment of taxes, overpayment of CPP fall into the category of refundable tax credit. But um, the non-refundable tax credit, like I said, would only reduce your tax payable to zero. You wouldn't get any refund back. So the next slide um, shows what your tax summary looks like. This is not particularly how it looks like. I just wanted to give us a little understanding of how it is. You have your total income, the income you earn from all, all the um, um, work you did during the tax year. And if, for example, you're a newcomer and you came into Canada half year, if you earned income in the country of residence, you were before you're also supposed to declare that income when you're filing your taxes and that will be included in your total income. So your total income less your deductions and um, the deductions, like I said, one of the examples I gave, the medical expenses, the donations. And also if you made RRSP donations during the year, it also reduces your total income. So if you um, made um, RRSP's registered, retired registered savings plan, if you make donations to an RRSP, it will reduce the amount on which you're paying taxes on now. And um, it also gives you an opportunity to save for your future. And by the time you're withdrawing that um, RRSP in the future, you're paying it at a lower tax bracket. So once you have all your deductions, you have your taxable income, and then you have a federal rate, which is a general rate that everyone will pay in Canada. And on, on this federal rate, there are also some tax credits that the federal tax credit that you can claim to reduce the federal tax rate. And then after the federal tax rate is being charged, the provincial rate is now being charged. And the provincial rate would vary all across different provinces. It's not the same as the federal rate. And then you, you calculate your, pro, your provincial, the provincial rate on your taxable income, and then you deduct all your credits. And then you get to the final stage of your tax return. You, know, you determine whether you have a, an owing or you have a refund. And I'm sure most of the time, we always like to be in a refund position so that we have something to, to take home. So I just put together some quick definitions. Um, we have CRA, CRA, CRA is Canada Revenue Agency and they are in charge of administering um, taxes in Canada. They are the agency that is responsible for administering benefits to citizens and residents of Canada. Now, um, notice of assessment. This is the document that CRA will send to you after processing your tax returns and um, it's also um, one document that financial institutions would usually ask from you just as a proof that you filed your taxes if you need um, something from them. And then CCB is a Canada Child Benefit is a tax-free payment that helps eligible families 
with the cost of raising children under 18. So not all families will get this depending on their income. If your income is high above a certain threshold, you probably might not be eligible for the CCB. But for low income earners, this is one benefit that is very helpful to support in raising children under the age of 18. And now the GST and HST credit is a tax-free payment that eligible individuals receive every three months. So if you're eligible, you receive it quarterly. And um, if you, like I said, if your income is higher than a certain threshold, you might not be eligible. So not everybody's eligible for this credit. But if your income is modest and low, you might be eligible for GST and HST credit, which um, you get every quarter. And then um, in different provinces, there are different types of benefit. But in New Brunswick, um, the I think the GST credit is one, you know, very um, standard one that we also all receive all across Canada. But in provinces like Ontario, um, Nova Scotia, they receive um, credits like um, the climate action payment, and that helps with um, pollution. So um, there are other, other credits like trillion benefit as well that helps to support um, Rent, those that have those that those that rent properties and have low income. So we wouldn't find all those credits in New Brunswick, but the GST and HST is a standard one, and that's why I put it on this um, slide. And then balance owing, if you have a balance owing, that means that's the amount you're paying to CRA before April 30th. And if you have a refund. A refund is, is an amount that CRA is paying back to you because you had more credits than taxes to pay. So I just wanted to share quick and important facts because um, there have been lots of um, scams going on, unsolicited phone calls, text messages, especially during this tax season. I recently received a message that says you have a refund from CRA, click this link to claim your refund. CRA will not send you messages. CRA will not leave voice messages that threatens you. CRA will not leave messages that asks for your personal or financial information. Please, please beware of scammers. And CRA will not ask for information like your passport or health card or driver's license. And it's also important to note that you keep all your documents for six years after you file your taxes, as CRA may request for these documents at any time, if you're randomly picked for a review. And if you don't have those documents, it could be two things. Either you pay back any refund that CRA had given you, or you face criminal consequences for evading tax. So you want to be careful about and careful with um, claiming deductions that you do not have documentations for. And even after claiming them, be sure to keep them for six years. And then I just remembered something. Now, part of the expenses you could also claim is moving expense. If you moved within Canada, from one province to another to change your school or for work purpose, you could also claim moving expenses on your tax return and all this reduces your tax liability. So thank you for listening. Um, I'm just gonna open the floor for questions and answers. If there's anything I didn't touch base on, then we could talk about it. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Nikki, for that, you know, mm -hmm loaded information. I mean, most of the questions I had here, you literally responded to them through the presentation, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to see if there's any, let me just check the chat box and see if we have any comments or any questions. So um, if I says this is very good information, we'll say it's very informative. Thank you, Nike. And then if again says, thank you for being so clear. That's right, so clear. And then, Jimmy says, educative and informative. Thanks, Adi. Thank you so much. And then I see a raised hand here from Prude Classroom. Yes, please. Rob? Yeah. Hi, good morning. Hi, Rob. Sorry, could you speak up, please? OK. Then can you hear me now? Uh, not quite. I don't know if I did, but I, I, I'm struggling to hear. Uh, and now, can you hear me? 
Yeah, I think it's better now. Adi, can you hear her? Yes, I can, yeah. I know the question is for you, so you need to. Yeah. Okay, my question is, um, if uh, my daughter, she's studying in another country, not uh, here in, uh, in, uh, in Canada, and uh, I pay for her, uh, her school, and uh, can I uh, deduce this amount from my, um, my uh, income? Absolutely, yes, you can. So the, the one another benefit of the, the tuition credit is when you pay tuition credit, um, when you sorry, when you pay tuition fees to um, a Canadian university, at the end of the year they give you a slip that is called T twenty two O two. So that slip, if your child doesn't have enough income to claim or to use that credit, they can transfer it to their parents or to their grandparents. And then if it's not your child, if it's you that paid the school fees, if you don't have enough income to claim it, instead of carrying, carrying it forward for 10 years, you could transfer it to your spouse as well. So it's either um, your child transfers to you or transfers to their grandparents, or if you are the one that paid the school fees, you can transfer to your spouse. But you have to seek their consent before you transfer. Is there any element to uh, to deduce this amount? Is there what? Any limit? Limit. 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 So five thousand. You can only oh. transfer five thousand. Yes. So if the okay. tuition credit the child has is ten thousand, for example, you can only um, the child can only transfer five thousand to you. So the remaining five thousand is carried over. That's if the child did not have enough income to use that credit. Okay, and um, can I re report the, the amount uh, for the next year or for the uh, next years? Absolutely, as long as your child gives you the consent. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the, the remaining amount? Yeah. About the 5,000? Yeah. So I think the question was about the remaining amount. The remaining amount to be the... carried forward on the child's um, balance. It will be carried forward to future years, up to 10 years. Ah, okay. Yeah. But the question was about a non-Canadian university. So not- A non-Canadian university. Hmm. Not in Canada. So it has to be a Canadian university. It has to be a Canadian university. Though I'm not sure if there is something that you can claim on a non-Canadian university but I'm very sure about the Canadian university because you will definitely get a T22 to sleep. Okay, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you for that question. Any other question? Let me check the chat box again. Okay, so if I says, please, do you help Canadian citizens or residents file their taxes? Yes, I do. I do both for the um, virtual clinic and um, the free tax clinic. And I also do for those that are not eligible for it. So I usually file taxes for people. Yeah. For individuals, businesses, nonprofits, yes, for indi anyone? For individual, yes, for anyone. Individuals, corporate returns and personal returns. Good to know, because some people might just have that question as well. Any okay. other questions? And then I shared my contact details on the yeah on the slide as well so if you have further questions and then you want to contact Adi after this please feel free to connect with her and then i'm sure she will do an absolutely fantastic job with your taxes okay i see hand raised again from the classroom hi just wondering if, if um working on taxes you feel is like a public service or what's What's your motivation? Do you, do you just like numbers or you like money or how? Just if you could speak to you, maybe I missed it. I, I was in and out of the classroom, but. Uh, just oh, on your, thank on you very program. much, Rob, for that. Usually we make a guess like it beyond what you do, who are you and why do you do what you do? But thank you for reminding me to that. So thanks, Rob, I appreciate it. And so why do you do what you do? What I do, okay. So <laughs> I'm an accountant by profession. I, I love numbers a lot and um, I enjoy, you know, um, filing taxes is, 
is one you know very fun aspect for me something I enjoy doing because you meet people you get to understand different situations of people and you get to give you know um, advice and um, you get to you know share knowledge and let people be aware of what taxes is all about you know in Canada so that they don't make a mistake and they do not say oh I wasn't aware of this but above it all it, it's um and I'm an accountant by profession and I love numbers I love figures <laughs> all right thank you very much Rob I hope that answered the question okay um uh, let me check the chat box again and then Kenny says, can a newcomer file tax online for the first time? I read that for the first time of filing tax, it has to be paper. Is this true? No, that's not true. So um, if, you, um, if you have um, a representative that can e-file it for you electronically, yes, you can. And there's something you can help with? Oh, yes, I've been doing that. Okay, just so we're glad. Thank you. And then um, while we're waiting for other questions to come up, I have just one or two questions here. So first of all, I'm very happy that you cleared a lot of um, questions I have here. So now I understand why um, students, especially international students and unemployed persons need to file their taxes. Sometimes you think you file taxes only when you're working, but from the presentation today, it doesn't have to be so. Then also you mentioned the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. And then you mentioned very important tax date we must know. And then you talked about the differences between refundable and non-refundable tax credits. And you went on to talk about the different employment slips that we need to have and then how to identify each of them, the T4, T4A, T4E, you know, and all of those different. So, okay, thank you for clarifying that because I find them very confusing as well when I see all of those different. So now one question I have is around the child benefits. How long does an immigrant family need, how long is an immigrant family required to live in Canada to be eligible for child benefits? Okay, so when you say immigrant family, sometimes some immigrants come with permanent residents and for, for permanent residents, as soon as they get to Canada, they're eligible to um, claim the CCB. And oh, I didn't know. if they claim for that, they have to declare what their income has been from wherever country they're coming from in that particular year. So that will determine what amount will be paid to them as um, CCB benefit. So um, for international students or for other categories of um, immigrants who are not permanent residents, they have to be in Canada for 18 months before they can have access to child care benefit. I see. Okay, what if they're not aware and then they've lived for like say maybe 24 months and then they realize, oh, I should have filed like, you know, three years, sorry, three months back. Is there a way to get back what they missed? So there is a possibility. I'm not saying there is no possibility, probably depending on whoever um, attends to them, you know, from CRA, they, they, there is a possibility that they could get it backdated. But if not, they're in a win-win situation. They're getting something anyway. So if I were in that position, I wouldn't even fight it. I'll just, as long as I get something. Because I had a case, I think someone, I, I think I learned about someone who, who um, did not know they were eligible to file and then, and they had like three young kids. By the time CRA paid back, I think they received about 10,000 in reform yes, that's, for child that's, benefit. Yes, that's, I, I mean, that's that was mind blowing, you know. Yes, to yes. I wanted to know if that is still, I know some of these things change every now yeah. and then. So I want to know mm -hmm. if that still exists or it has changed. Okay, very well. Then the other question I have is around um, moving expenses. So when right. people are moving from province to province or relocating, they can yes. claim moving expenses. What That's about correct. for businesses, small businesses? So when they're moving locations, like you know, from office A to office B, you know, are they eligible to claim moving expenses as well? So if you're self-employed and then you're moving from one province to another province, in order to start a business or to start a work, you can claim moving expenses. So ideally corporations would be able to claim almost all expenses. For co so corporate returns is clearly different from personal returns. So corporate returns, they, have, they can claim almost every expense, but for personal returns, they're just certain 
expenses you could claim. So if you're self-employed, you fall under the category of personal tax returns, not corporate returns. So if you're moving provinces for the purpose of you know, starting a business, yes, you're eligible to claim moving expenses. I see. Very good. Okay. Now, uh, the other question I have is um, in relation, in relation to uh, tips. I didn't know that barristers could report tips on their income. Right, and so tips are not reported on in, the tips are not reported on your pay stub. Okay, how is it reported? No report. So you just because, because your employer just gives you if you're a restaurant worker at the end of the day. Okay, so Thanks it's, for it's collected all. For example, for example, if the total tip collected in a restaurant in a day um, is two hundred dollars, and there are probably maybe four servers or cooks, so it's shared among them into four to get $50 each. It's not reported anywhere. You just know that you received that cash. Okay. All right. So it's so your responsibility you. to declare it on your income, what your total tips for the year was. Oh, okay. Thanks for clarifying. I, I thought you had to report. Okay. So that means each of them, I expected to report that on their income that they got um, $50 each, for example, every week, you know, yeah. or once in a while um, yes. during this. Oh, I see. That's correct, yeah. Okay, good to know. So we learn every day. Please, do you have any other questions? Let me check the chat box before. Okay, so Jimmy says, I can attest to that she loves numbers and she files my corporate taxes. Auntie Lucky Jimmy, good for you. You don't, you don't have to worry <laughs> as most businesses do. I mean, during this tax season, it's just crazy. A lot of people are just running, you know, health is scared of trying to find the right person that will do your taxes for you because I've seen cases where, the wrong person does the taxes and instead of getting higher refunds, you get lower refunds because someone did not do what they were supposed to do. So right. you're lucky, Jimmy, to be in good hands. So congrats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? I'm just trying to look for where that is. Mm, okay. Just a moment, please. I'm just trying to. Okay, so what could be a possible, um, okay, I see a hand raised in the classroom. Yes? Sorry, we just, we're looking at the, the website for CRA, the um, tax free, clinic, free tax clinics. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there are so many, but then like for the newcomer center said, the newcomer center is full and they're not accepting. So is there a live version of that list that shows where there's still openings, there's still possibilities, or is, it's just a spreadsheet, I think, or a table. But um, do, do you know what I mean? Like that some some places finish their quota, or they just they have they're maxed out and they don't accept more. So it's been quite crazy this year. Like the turnout for um, free tax clinic has been really massive, and we've had a lot of people showing up for that and. Unfortunately, just like you said, I exclusive it might truly be closed because they are maxed out. So, and there are no second chances if you miss the first. I, I because we, we don't have control over it. So for example, I um, part of my free chat link I file virtually, but the information is sent to me. I can't just go out of my way to file for someone. So the, that information of those to file for is being sent to me because they have to re register through that channel that he was talking about. Oh, I see. Well, you mentioned a virtual free tax clinic as well? Was that? Yes, there is a virtual free tax clinic, yeah. Thanks, Rob. Special programs for I have a question here. Someone says, as an international student who, who arrived Canada in September, 2022 and started earning income in Canada, um, in the third week of December, two weeks to the end of the year. Am I also required to file? In fact, if you file your taxes, you might be surprised that you might get a refund, hmm. especially on that income tax that you paid. So it's advisable to file your taxes. Awesome. That helps. Okay, now the other question I have is um, with regards to business um, income. I see a lot of people in the line of my work, you know, I meet newcomer women, international students who want to start businesses, but are always reluctant to register their business because they're wondering if I register the business now, what about taxes? You know, um, am I 
am I am I supposed to start collecting taxes? Should I? Should I not? And it again becomes complex. And how does that affect their personal income? Can you just speak? I know we have about seven minutes or so. Can you just speak a bit on that? So how, how and when should a, a small business owner worried about filing or co collecting taxes? So um, you're a small business, you just want to start a business. It's either you are a sole proprietor or partnership. And if you fall under the category of a sole proprietor and, and a, or a partnership, then you're meant to file personal income tax every year between mid-February and April 30th. So um, if that business is growing gradually, it's important if you can't keep that record, that is why you have an accountant or a books, um, uh, a, good, um, a bookkeep, bookkeeping services, employ the services of a bookkeeper. You are doing yourself good by keeping your records, by recording all your income and all your expenses, because these are all the information you're going to be needing to file your taxes. And a lot of people do um, ignore this aspect of reporting the income you're not doing yourself any good because if in future you need something from the government or you need something from the bank, filing your taxes, your notice of assessment is proof that you've earned income. So you're doing yourself good by reporting your income and by you know, registering that business as a sole proprietorship so that Canada Revenue Agency knows that you exist. And then when it comes to collecting taxes, I, I, I want to suppose you mean the GST and HST. GST, GST, GST. So if your income is below 30,000, you're not really obliged to collect that GST and HST. But once you start earning income above 30,000, then it's advisable for you to register for a GST number. And once you have that GST number, you can charge taxes. But without a GST number, you cannot charge someone for, for HST. I see. Okay, what if someone is not aware and then they're already into like fifty thousand in revenue and then they're not charging GST? Is they is they? So they have to go and register for a GST. If they don't know how to do it, then they can um, seek the services of an accountant or someone that knows how to do it. Register for GST. Let CRA know that you exist and let CRA know that your income is above you know, 30,000, and then you can start charging GST. And once you start charging GST, you are expected to also file your GST every year or every quarter or every month, depending on whatever month you, or whatever period you choose. So when you file your GST, whatever you collected from services or products you sold is being um, net off from whatever you paid on your expenses. And in either ways you could, be hoing CRA or you could get a refund on the GST. So I would advise such person to seek, you know, the advice of an accountant that knows more about and will be able to guide them if they can't do it by themselves. Yeah. Okay. Very well. Thank you. And now so that let's take me to the next question. So sometimes the share for people who are new and like how do we go about finding the accountant that is right for us. Most of these things, sometimes a lot of people get this through trial and error. You'd have been, you know, you'd have had sometimes a very bad experience with a service provider or an accountant until you just, you look around until you finally find one. So what would be your advice when someone is looking for a reputable accountant or someone who's good? How do one go about looking for one? What's your recommendation? I think word of mouth would be, you know, one of them or recommendations from, you know, from people. And then it also depends on who you're comfortable with. Are you comfortable with this person? Like, do you think this person really explains things to you? Because not all accountants will really explain things to you for you to really understand, you know. So if you're comfortable with, you know, the knowledge this person has and the knowledge this um, accountant shares, then I think you're on the right you know, right pathway, because it's also important for you to understand whatever you are paying taxes or whatever you're doing, it's important for you to understand why you are doing it, not just, oh, my accountant said I should do this, so I'm doing it, but you really have to understand, and also understand the implications of, you know, the, the decisions you make. That's good. Okay, now that you mentioned that, is there a difference between, so for, for business purposes, is there a difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant? So, yes, a bookkeeper, um, might not be CPA, right? An accountant 
a, a chartered accountant would be CPA, would have a professional qualification. That being said, that doesn't mean that a bookkeeper might not have the necessary you know, skills and um, qualifications or to do the job. But the difference between the bookkeeper and accountant will be that an accountant will be qualified and you know, have a CPA designation, but a bookkeeper might not necessarily have. Thank you very much. So let me just check the chat box and I see what I have here. So the same person said, would filing the, would the filing include income and from my home country before arriving in Canada? That is so between January and August. Yes, that's correct. So this was from the same person. Yes. yes. And it so that means like their total the income. Paid. Yes. That would also include if you pay taxes as well in the country you relocated from, you also, you know, declare that tax as well in order so, to get a foreign tax credit. Okay, that was my question because so that means if he earned that income outside Canada and he already paid taxes on that income, he yeah. doesn't have to pay taxes on, those, on that income here in Canada again, but he will get tax credit. He will get a tax credit, yeah. He might pay income, but that is why he's get, he might pay taxes on it, but he's still he's getting a tax credit. So it kind of offsets whatever coin. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. So do we have any final question, comments, suggestions before we um, let Adi leave for the afternoon? Any questions? No. Okay, so Adi, do you, um, Adi, do you have any final note or message to everyone who's listening to us right now? What's your final message so, to everyone um, out there? What I'd like to say is um, follow your taxes. Even if you arrived in Canada December, the 25th of a particular year, it's so important to file your taxes because if you don't, you might be missing out on certain benefits. And then the, the, the more you file your taxes, the more RRSP contribution room it gives you. And then also declare your income. You're doing yourself good. You're doing yourself good because um, that income is what the bank will be looking at if you visit them in years to come to get a mortgage. So if you're new to a country, you have a business, you have a side business that you're doing under your roof, report the income. It's going to do you good than ham because the, 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 the financial institution will work with figures. They wouldn't work by word of mouth that I own this business. What's the proof that you own the business? It's that income that you declare on your tax return and report to Canada Revenue Agency. And that's the income that CRA would put on your notice of assessment that is sent to you after you file your taxes. So look for an accountant that you're comfortable with, get the right information and declare all the income that you need to, to declare to file your taxes. Awesome. Thank you so very much, Nick. I really appreciate that. It's been very enlightening and empowering. Thank you for those valuable insights to just share with us. Like personally, I've been, you know, um, my knowledge has been enriched just by this one hour. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And so on that note, as those in the movies who call it, you know, it's a wrap with me here today so <laughs> thank you so very much everyone put in classroom um jimmy thank you for always being there supporting and then thank you to all our guests who signed in today thank you so very much for your for great questions and the engaging questions just to make this even more interesting for everyone so on that note i want to say thank you once again and enjoy the rest of your afternoon and again keep oh, i see someone raising their hands oh, is they are clapping. That's true. Oh, so clapping. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you to oh, you. Thank you. Thanks. So, so feel yeah. free to contact me if you have any questions or any inquiries with thank you. business. Yeah, and you had and you had her, please do not hesitate <laughs> to contact her if you have any questions or you know, or but whether it's on this presentation or any tax related or accounting, please reach out to her because again, um, like one of the questions I asked, people are always looking for professionals and service provider in this space to help. So if you have one here already, please do not hesitate to reach out. So again, on that note, I want to say, use the resources at your disposal and then let's grow together. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, everyone, especially you, Ade, Nike. I appreciate your time today. And so enjoy the rest of the afternoon, everyone. Again, Thank see you. you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.